Hey, visionaries, Butch Hartman here. Welcome to Vision Possible. We wanna help you make your daydream your day job. I'm so glad you guys are here. And uh, what a great week it's been so far. Um, and I'm just so glad, uh, no matter what day you're watching this, uh, it's been a great week. You know why? Because you are working towards your goal. You are working toward your chosen profession. You're working toward uh, building your gift and expanding your horizons. And that's why you're watching this right now. And I'm just so glad that you're here. Um, it's so exciting to be able to impart any sort of uh, knowledge that I may have gathered through my over 35 years in the Hollywood industry. I mean, at this point, my gosh, it's been that long. I can't believe, oh man, time goes so fast. It's crazy. I know, <laughs> I know you don't believe it until you experience it. If you're 20 watching this, yes, time has gone by, but when you're in your 50s like I am right now, it just goes by, you can't believe how much time has gone by and how quickly it went. And you just wonder, boy, oh boy, uh, I really hope you are getting to uh, fully enjoy your gift and uh, or giftings, many giftings I'm sure you have. I hope you're getting to do it uh, for a living and I hope you're getting to, or at least you're working toward doing it for a living because that's what we wanna do here on this channel. We wanna help you get your goals accomplished. So let's do it. I'm excited. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be so cool. So listen, today we're talking about, um, are you a worker bee or are you a king bee? I think there's, or a queen bee. There's, I know there's a queen bee. There's no king bee, but we're gonna, just for the sake of argument, uh, worker bee or queen bee or a king bee. How about just the boss bee? We'll say that. We'll just say the boss bee. Are you a worker bee or a boss bee? Uh, that's a decision you have to make. That's a decision you have to make. Yeah, what do you mean by that? Well, I mean, are you a boss? Uh, are you a leader or a follower? And by the way, either one is completely fine. There's no judgment here on either one. If you're going to be a uh, follower and, and do uh, what you're told and, and uh, do it well, of course you'll do it well because you're an amazing artist or, or writer or your talent lies somewhere else. But if you wanna do it for somebody else, that is a billion percent awesome. And I admire that. I support it. I did it for many, many years. Even when I was the boss of my own show, I uh, was still doing it for Nickelodeon. So there is always going to be somebody above you in some capacity. But um, it's how close do you want to get to the top? Uh, that's my question for you today. <clears throat> do you want to, you know, uh, again, the worker bee mentality is someone who always, always, and I I know this for a fact because this is how my brain worked for many, many years. The worker bee mentality says I can only, I'm, I gotta work, 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 work. I gotta work, work, work. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I don't go to meetings. I don't deal with any of that political stuff. I don't talk to anybody. I come in, I put my headphones on, I work, I get up, I have lunch and I go home after that, you know, whatever. And that's totally fine. But if you're gonna be the boss bee, the boss bee, um, you need to learn that, you know, even though you have giftings in art, writing, maybe music, uh, if you're gonna be the boss and have your own business or have your own show or have your own production company, there's gonna be things you do that are gonna be, gonna be adult things. You're gonna have to do grown up things like, you know, write a business plan. You're gonna have to have that big meeting with that client even though it's kind of scary because you don't know how to have a big meeting with a big client, but you know, you've watched a couple of YouTube videos and now you gotta have that big meeting. You've got to get business coming in. You know, uh, just because I could draw as a kid didn't mean I'd ever make any money at it until I set my mind to it, you know? And at first it's funny when I was a kid, I didn't even look at getting the job to make money. I looked at the job to, be able to say, oh, I work at Disney. You know, I, I wanted to work at Disney so I could say, I work at Disney. That's, I, I wasn't even thinking about the money as a kid. Uh, my mindset was just, hey, I've got to work for Disney because that's what I've always wanted to do. And to this day, this is the first video of mine you're watching, I've never worked for Disney. I've worked, <laughs> I've worked at a ton of other places. I never worked for Disney Studios. And that was my dream. That's why I came to California in the first place, was to work for Walt Disney Studios, and I never did. And uh, yeah, I don't regret it at all because I had an amazing uh, career and still am having an amazing career doing what I love, and I hope you are too. But uh, yeah, I never worked for Disney, and uh, I, like I said, I always kind of looked at Disney as this mountain uh, I could never attain, and that was my mindset at the time. And I wanted to go in as an animator back in the day, and I realize now 
that had I, if I had it to do over again, if I wanted to go to Disney, I would go in as a writer and a creative person. I'd go in, not that the animators aren't creative, of course they are, but I would go in as a, like a, a story um, editor, or I'd go in as an artist and a, a board artist, or I'd go in as something in the story area. Yeah, and not just an animator. Uh, again, I'm not saying just an animator. Animators are super talented. But I mean, I don't want to be only an animator is what I should say. Uh, so yeah, that's what I would have done. But again, I, when I was younger, didn't have a mentality of uh, boss B at all. I didn't have the boss B mentality because I was just going to work and be somebody's, uh, somebody's employee. That was what I was going to do. And that was my mindset. And that's fine. That's completely fine. But if you're going to be somebody's employee, you need to be someone's extra special, most awesome, best employee ever. Think about that. You need to be the best employee. You don't, need, you don't go into work and complain about everything that they do. You don't talk about the boss. You don't do things that make the company look bad or make uh, you look bad to the company. You don't do any of that stuff because you need to be the person that helps so much that they can't do business without you. That's your employee mentality. That's what, that's what your employee mentality should always be. They cannot do this without me. They're going to love me. They need to keep me around for as long as they're going to be here. That's your mentality. And you also, um, if you want to move to the boss B level of mentality, you need to, boss B level of mentality. If you want to move to the boss B level, your mentality has to be one of, I need to learn how to manage things. I need to learn how to manage. How do I... Uh, how do I pull myself away from my, you know, for example, if you want to be an artist and draw all day, but want to become a boss, that's what happened to me. I was an artist who just drew all day. But then when I became a boss, I couldn't draw as much because I was having to go to editing sessions and story uh, meetings. And I was going to uh, voice recordings and I was going to sound mixes and I was going to all kinds of stuff that involved every aspect of the cartoon uh, uh, world. But I just wasn't doing any more drawing because I didn't have time. You know, but I realized, look, if I want to make fairly odd parents, I still got the draw, don't get me wrong, but I didn't get the draw as much as I wanted to. <laughs> and that's what I really wanted. But I knew that having my own show was an incredible opportunity. I couldn't pass it up. I mean, there's so many people that would love to have a show on television. And I've met a lot of them and everybody asked me questions. How do I sell a show? How do I pitch a show? I want to be a showrunner. And I get it. I know the burning desire that you have. It's a wonderful one. Um, and I want you to have that opportunity. I want you to have that opportunity to make your own show. I really do. But as your friend, as your buddy Butch Hartman, I don't feel right telling you to go do it now if you're not prepared. Because what's going to happen is uh, this thousand pound weight is going to get put on you. And you're not going to be able to handle it because it's a lot of responsibility. And if you haven't learned that type of mentality, you're gonna, it's going to crush you. And it's going to uh, make you look bad. And you're probably going to wait a very, very long time until you get something else. I've seen it happen with show creators, showrunners, where um, they would give a young person a show at some of the studios I worked at. You'd have, the, they'd have their own show, their own project or whatever it was. And the young person, sometimes even an older person, they just didn't care. They thought, oh, this is easy. It happened once, it'll happen again. Oh, I got a show? That's awesome. And they didn't take it seriously enough. And then I saw these people not put 100% into their job. Their show would end up looking bad because they didn't put the time and attention into it that was necessary. And so even though they had a boss mentality, they wanted to be the boss, they didn't realize the skill level it took to remain a boss. So, you know, skill level and um, uh, mentality are so important. You know, and uh, yeah, listen, there's some bosses we've all met. We've all met these bosses where uh, are, are a supervisor and they're just not good supervisors. You've met them a million times, um, you know, and, and but then there's some bosses and leaders that are fantastic. And you're like, wow, you want to really emulate that leader because they've got some amazing qualities that you want to have in your uh, in your own career, in your personal walk, you know. So um, but what mentality do you have right now? Are you a worker bee or are you a boss bee? Think about it. What do you, what do you want to do? Do you want to uh, teach others? 
Do you want to influence others or just kind of get a paycheck and do what you're great at? No problem with either one. They are both incredibly noble and incredibly cool. But uh, you need to figure that out because you're going to be one or the other. You're going to be either a worker bee or a boss bee. That, there's just those are the only two choices, really. You could be, even if you're like, okay, well, I'm not the boss, but I'm, an under, I'm under the boss, but I do supervise. If you're supervising anybody, you're a boss. <laughs> so if you're going to be any level of supervision, you're a boss. If you're going to teach anybody, you know, you're going to be a boss. Whatever it is, you're going to be a boss. So you need to get your, um, your, I guess your, your goals down so um, you can begin to work toward your, you know, your mentality level. Worker B. Worker B works, 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 does what they're told, does a great job. And then, uh, then the job ends. That worker B's got to go find somewhere else to work. Totally get it. Been there myself. But the boss B uh, gets a project, runs the project, makes the project look great, gets offered another project at a higher level, probably and even more money. You know, uh, and by the way, the worker bees get offered more money all the time too. There are some amazing jobs out there, very high paying jobs in the entertainment industry that are just fantastic. And, um, but that just depends on what they want to do. Do they want to, you know, be the worker bee or the boss bee? Because the boss bee does come with a higher level of responsibility. That is for sure. And uh, the boss bee will force you to confront um, things about yourself <laughs> that you never had to confront as the worker bee. I remember when I first got my first show, Fairly Odd Parents, I was like, wow, it just, it hit me. I went, wow, you know what? I gotta be the first one in every day. I, I wanna set an example that I'm here all the time. I'm working just as hard as everybody else is. I'm not kicking my feet back or kicking back my feet up on the desk, you know, drinking martinis all day. I'm in the trenches working just as hard as them, but I am the boss. So when I say something, they'll have to listen to me out of respect because they see me working just as hard as them. You know what I mean? And um, one thing also that the boss bees do, the boss bees create other versions of themselves. If you're a boss bee and you're a good boss bee, you'll begin to create other versions of you because you're training people to, to not just uh, do a good job, but hopefully they'll even replace you and you can move on to another project while these other boss bees do a great job, maybe filling in for you or maybe they're running your company while you're off starting another company. That's another thing too, starting a company. That's a boss bee all the way. Granted, it might be a little tiny company at, at first. You wanna sell you know, cookies on the street corner. You gotta make the cookies, you gotta put them in bags, you gotta get a sign, get a table. The boss bee figures all that out. And then the worker bee is the one that's hired to come stand at the cookie stand and then sell the cookies. That's the worker bee, you know what I mean? And both jobs have merit, both jobs are important, both jobs are valuable, and both jobs are absolutely necessary because without the worker bees, the boss bees can't push the product. So what is your product that you are selling or helping someone else to sell? Man, you know, in this new level that my wife and I are moving to, um, we're not like moving to a new neighborhood, we're like moving to another level of our thinking. Uh, and it's great to do it with somebody. My wife, Julianne and I do everything together. So uh, moving to this new level of thinking and, um, you know, of dreaming and, and leadership that we're moving into, uh, starting our own company and everything. It's been just a blast. It's been challenging, that's for sure. No doubt about that. But uh, it's been so much fun. And um, we've really learned a lot. But we've really been meeting people at the level we want to be at. I'm telling you, we, we started going, you know, and started verbalizing. We really want to move to this level of success and this level of creativity and this level of of accomplishment, and we suddenly found ourselves having doors open to us um, to meet these people. People that have started multi-million dollar companies, people that have started uh, huge movie projects, people that have started incredible companies that have helped the world. And, and I never thought I'd meet any of those people, let alone get to know them and become friends with them. I have a lot of their phone numbers now simply because I said I wanted to move to that level. And then when you say you're going to move to that level, you watch your body, your mind, your, your ambition is going to move to that level. And you're going to start going, you know what? I want to go to that seminar. I want to go to that convention. I, I want to meet that person. I want to hear that person speak. I want to go listen to that. You know, I'm going to buy this podcast. I'm going to buy this book. I'm going to buy this and that. And you're going to start buying things and, and, and just starting to point your mind in the direction 
of of what be you want to be. What do you want to be? To be or not to be? The boss be or the worker be, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, if you want to be a boss be, you know, start thinking about it. Start um, focusing on it and uh, begin moving in that direction. I think it's awesome. I think it's very cool to, um, to know that uh, there's opportunity out there. You know, there are many countries and many situations on the earth where someone can't ever hope to be a boss bee. And they can barely hope to be a worker bee. You know what I mean? They can't even have the opportunity to do either one. And so the fact that, uh, you know, there are so many opportunities out there that we can take advantage of is so exciting. And, um, you know, but, but there are people in other parts of the world that even though those opportunities don't exist, they make their own opportunity. You know, how did... How did so-and-so, a poor kid from a poor slum, become the, you know, the creator of this massive thing, whatever it is? There's a, there's a path there. That person found a path. That person uh, had a mentality of huge success. And, you know, it's just, it's just kind of amazing. And, um, you know, just to know that people can uh, achieve those huge goals just because of their mentality. And, and it doesn't matter what's in front of them. It doesn't matter what's blocking them. It doesn't matter what is, uh, you know, in their way. They're going to find a way around it and they're going to do it. So that's the most exciting thing about it. So we need to get our mindset correct. Are we a worker bee or a boss bee? Being a worker bee, no problem. You know, my wife kept telling me uh, as we were moving up to this new level of, you know, influence that we want to have, uh, you know, you need to get out of, she goes, you, you need to get out of that worker bee mentality. You're not a worker anymore. You're a boss now. And I was like, I had to start reminding myself that I was a boss. Like even having a channel like this, even having a, a, a broadcast like Vision Possible, we started this company, you know, and now it requires some sacrifice. We got to teach, make these videos, put them up, have a channel, make sure people have links where they can get a hold of us or can buy our books. And all, all this stuff has to be thought out. All of it has to be planned. And yeah, does that mean sometimes I don't get to sit around and relax or don't get to like, you know, Walk in the beach as many times as I'd want to. Well, sometimes it does mean that. Yeah, I have to sacrifice a little bit in order to make these things happen. And so um, doing that will really um, um, help help point you in the right direction. So, you know, worker bee, noble, super awesome, do an amazing job, you know, work and just do your best. And I know you will because that's, that's what the worker bee does. Worker bee, make sure that company gets its product out and makes a darn good product. But then there's the boss bee who, with the help of the worker bee, makes the company move. But that boss bee has got to have vision and has to, you know, understand how to get that product out there and, and formulate a plan for the worker bee to follow. Walt Disney, was he a worker bee or a boss bee? Obviously, he's a boss bee, but he wasn't always. He was a worker for a long time, but he had this ambition inside of him. He went, you know what? I'm going to start my own. I see, I see a vision of how to do these cartoons like no one's ever done them before and how to tell stories like no one's ever done before. I'm going to do this. And that's what Walt Disney started doing. And, you know, there you go. The Disney empire owns pretty much all of planet Earth now, I would say. So, uh, yeah, but uh, it's getting that right mentality, guys. Worker bee or boss bee, you know. I, myself, want to be a boss bee. That's because I got a lot of vision. I got a lot of projects I want to do. I got a lot of things I want to do. I got a lot of companies I want to create and run. And uh, I, me just being a worker bee doesn't suit me anymore. That's not me. I was that. I learned that. I'm moving to this new level now just because that's what I want to do. That's my choice, you know. What is your choice? If you want to be a boss bee, there's a lot to learn. Start looking at seminars and podcasts and things you can go to and learn from. And get around people that are bosses and learn from them. I'm reading a great book right now by a, a leader, a gentleman who's a leader of a company that I absolutely, he's a, he's a friend of mine. Um, I, there's things in this book I had no idea he thought or said. <laughs> like, wow, this is great. So, um, yeah, it really comes down to what choices will you make and how can you move yourself into that position of becoming uh, the boss bee or the worker bee that you want to, that you want to be. I keep saying be a lot. Uh, anyway, you know, so to be or not to be the worker bee or the boss bee. And uh, I'm excited to know what you want to be. Be, come, what you want to become. So, 
All right, guys, have a great rest of your week. Don't forget to check out our other teachers on this channel. They're fantastic. And we want to help you make your daydream your day job. And don't forget, here at Vision Possible, we encourage you to believe, conceive.